Hey crafty friends, this is Jenny from crafttestummies.com and today we're going to have a little experiment. We're going to be comparing jelly plates. We're comparing the Stampendous Creative Palette and the original Jelly Arts Jelly Breaking Plate. Let's take a look. Okay, we're gonna take a quick look at the two different products before we even get started and they get really super messy. So, um, I try to get similar sizes and the creative plate looks to be maybe about three six, or yeah, three sixteenths uh, of an inch thick. It's got um, a, some kind of plastic cover sheet on both sides and it's crystal clear. And like I said, it's brand new and open. So this is a eight and a half by 10 and three fourths and it's lightweight. And the jelly plate, mm, new in the cling wrap. Oh my gosh, look how much thicker these two products are. This is like literally twice as thick or three times as thick. It's also um, easier to take off the release papers or plastics. And um, it's really flexible. You see how I can just flop it back and forth? This one is much, much stiffer. So we'll see if that makes any difference when we actually go to play. All right, I have played with these for about three hours now, and I have some information before we go into the side-by-side -side demo. First of all, I've taken the plastic off, and before I was worried about the flexibility, well, this is actually very flexible. It's just so much thinner that it's, um, it, it has a different feel. So this is the Stampendous one, this is the Jelly Arts one. Uh, the other thing is, after taking off the top, I can tell you that the Jelly Arts plate is just stickier. It feels um, more moist, if that makes sense. Um, and it seems to grab the ink a lot better. This is you know, almost more dry to the touch. It almost feels like there's a plastic sheet on top, which there's not. And then, of course, you know, I did notice the thickness before, but now I really understand the difference. So you see how I can squish this and it goes all the way down and then back up? And when I squish the Stampendous one, it doesn't hardly give at all. This is a big difference when you are working with stencils especially and you're trying to roll over and get indentations. Um, the, how squishy it is really makes a difference. So now I'm going to get out my brayer and we're gonna ink these up side by side so you can see for yourself. Okay, so for these tests I'm going to use fairly runny, fairly cheap, crafty paint so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. This part might be a little bit boring, but again, it's just good to kind of see what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. I'm actually even mixing brands here. And I'm just kind of mixing up a color here on the palette. This is something I like to do is just kind of squiggle my brayer back and forth. It helps mix the colors a little bit. And if you don't like the colors, just add a little more. And get more of an ombre effect there. And I don't, I personally like to see the colors kind of mottled and mixy. That makes me happy, but you can do it however you like. So for this first test, I'm just using a plastic fork and I'm gonna squiggle, 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 kind of wipe it off and squiggle, squiggle, squiggle. And then add a little bit of bubble wrap. And I have a little piece of paper off camera that I'm printing things onto. So like when I kind of clean that off, I'm kind of dabbing it on this other piece of paper, which will give me even another set of prints, which is kind of fun. Okay. Something that I punched out using my Fiskars, whatever the big punch thing is, that big cartridge punch, just because I thought it was pretty and I'll flip it over and do it again. And that just helps create some texture. So, you know, this was originally gelatin printing. They would actually make prints with gelatin. They would make unflavored gelatin. You can still do that. It's really cheap. It's not very permanent, but you can do it. All right, so this is plain copy paper. And I'm just gonna rub this with my hand. 
and rub this with my hand. I'm gonna be honest too, I like a thicker paper than the copy paper. And this is two pieces, let me get that. Okay, so because it's copy paper, it will warp a little bit. But there you can see the print that I got. Now, the fork marks are really, really light on the Stampendous. They are more pronounced on the jelly plate. And the reason why I just wanted to show this to you live is I was doing this um, playing in my studio and I found every time that like the fork print lines or the fine detail lines just were not really showing up that well on the Stampendous plate. And I think it's because this is squishier and it'll actually take those lines a little bit better. But overall, you know, I like the way the bubble wrap turned out. Everything else looks really good. All right, so let's do another, another test. Okay, and for this one, I'm gonna use a stencil. Might have to move them over a little bit. I'm using big stencils with each of them. And the first thing I'm gonna do is lift a print just from what you see here. So copy paper. And I'm trying to use equal pressure. I'm sorry, the table is moving. The camera is actually staying still, but my table has casters, so it rolls around while I'm doing these tests. All right, so print number one. You can see that it really did not have a lot of definition, but it lifted the color. But when you use the jelly plate, you get a lot more solid line definition. Again, I think it's because the plate itself is squishier and it will allow you to kind of push the paper down in and get more out of it. So this is a fun technique though, no matter what. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take paint color number two. You can, by the way, use the brayer on the back of the jelly plates to uh, lift images. I kind of choose not to. I like to use my hands. I think massaging it gives it a a better print, but that's just me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to do get a little more. I also think maybe you need slightly more paint on the Stampendous pad because it doesn't give. It's a drier. It's a drier texture. I don't know how else to describe it, but it doesn't seem to keep the paint as wet as long. You can see I'm having to use a lot more paint. The stencils are equally as thick, so it's not the stencil, it's just, it takes more to cover. Mm -hmm. And I actually can add even a little more on here. Now, here's an interesting thing. If you listen, you can almost hear it kind of make a little squishy sound. And I can tell by the sound when it's really mixed and ready to go. This feels a little thick, but that's okay. I'm just gonna take a little bit off. And now we will remove this and try and put that over somewhere on the table where it won't make a huge mess. Isn't that great? Oh! So now we have a two-tone print. Drop it down, drop it down. Here's something else really fun I learned off the crafty interwebs. Put your stencil back down on top, like so. Haven't done a whole lot, but what you can do then is put another piece of paper on top and get the ink off of the stencil as the same time that you are rubbing your print in, which is kind of fun. So first I'm gonna rub. And like I said, when I do it with my fingers, when I rub the paper with my fingers, I can actually feel it getting down into the stencil. So if you're stenciling, I just like that better than, you know, say just going like this, which is a lot less precise. But now I got a little shadow print off of the stencil. And just one more time here, make sure I got the edges. There's my print off of the jelly plate. And see how it has almost like a, um, let's see if I can, 
focus it. All right, you see how I get those like almost like an outline? And that's because the jelly will allow you to kind of squish that down in because it's deeper. And here's the stencil print, which is lovely. Love that. One more rub. Oop, this is wrinkly. And then here's my print off of the stencil. Now, because that blue had gotten so dry, almost none of the blue came off on top. So you see how here the blue came up, but here the blue really didn't. Now, these are gorgeous, that's pretty, but it's just a difference between this pad being more dry and this one being wetter. You can even see it on the reflections. Okay, one more thing we're gonna do to try and clean off the Okay, palette. I just added just one more layer of paint. I added just a little bit of texture, and now I'm gonna try and see if I can lift everything off of the sheet. Okay, some little bumples and ridges. All right, so I got one here. Did not lift everything off. You can still see a lot of residue. So I'm lay this back down. Clean off my brayer and see if I can get a little more off. And for the jelly plate, I got a lot more off. You can see lots and lots of fun layers here, which I think that's what's fun about the jelly plate is you get a lot of layers. And it is not quite clean, but almost clean. And I wasn't able to lift a second print at all. So you can see the difference with the soft, moist jelly pad and the Stampendous Mono Printing Plate is it's just so much drier. Now you could use probably some um, retardant in there to kind of make everything juicier, but for those of us who like to just work right out of the tubes, that would be an unnecessary extra step. Now I'm going to print with something a little thicker. This is um, Creative Medium Iridescent from Imagine Crafts. Once again, my overall result is that a lot more material is left on the Stampendous plate than it is on the Jelly plate. That it, the Jelly Arts plate is better at releasing more of the ink. Um, and once you've got this much built up, I don't know how to get it off other than just washing the pad off entirely. Just scrape it off and waste these pretty prints that I would love to be able to pull up. I just cannot find another way. You can't lift it with water, you can't lift it with more paint, you can't lift it with an extended drying medium. So it's just wasted. I hope you found this helpful and or informative. If so, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps out our channel. I have to tell you that I myself am going to keep using that Jelly Arts Jelly Plate. But I also found out that you can make them yourself out of regular gelatin or preserved gelatin. So stay tuned, there'll be another video coming up very soon comparing gelatin recipes, just because that's fun too, and also maybe a little card share. So thank you so much for watching, and have a crafty day.